In this lesson, we will discuss helicopter weight and balance and work through an example of how to conduct a weighted balance check for a helicopter. We will also ha explain how to conduct a weight and balance check using charts and graphs. Additional information on these topics can be found in FAA General Handbook 8083-30 Chapter 4 and in the Aircraft Weight and Balance Handbook. The weight and balance procedures for helicopters are very much like those we have already learned for airplanes, with a few exceptions. First, the center of gravity range for helicopters is typically much smaller than that for airplanes. And secondly, in airplanes, we normally only conduct a weight and balance check along the longitudinal axis, where with helicopters, we must conduct a weight and balance check about both the longitudinal and the lateral axis. The lateral center of gravity of a helicopter is determined in the same manner as the longitudinal center of gravity of an airplane, except the distances between the wane points and butt line zero are used as the arms. Arms to the right of butt line zero are positive and those to the left are negative. Here you see an overhead view of what represents a typical small helicopter. Just like an aircraft, we may take measurements from our datum along the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. Just like in our airplanes, measurements to the rear of the datum or after the datum are positive. Measurements forward of the datum are negative. In helicopters, however, we also need to take measurements left and right of the butt line. The butt line takes measurements left and right of the center of the longitudinal axis of the airplane. Measurements to the right of the butt line are positive. Measurements to the left of the butt line are negative. Let's work through an example of a weight and balance calculation for a typical small helicopter. In this example, the empty weight of our helicopter is 1,545 pounds. The empty weight center of gravity is 101.4 inches aft of the datum and 0 0.2 inches right of butt line zero. The pilot weighs 170 pounds and is at 64 inches aft of the datum and 13.5 inches left of butt line zero. The passenger weighs 200 pounds and is at 64 inches aft of the datum and 13.5 inches right of butt line zero. Our fuel, 48 gallons worth, or 288 pounds, is at 96 inches aft of the datum and 8.4 inches left of butt line zero. We will perform the longitudinal center of gravity check for this helicopter just like we would perform a CG check for an airplane. We will start by completing an item, weight, arm, and moment chart, filling in under the items columns the aircraft, the pilot, passenger, and fuel. Under the weight columns, we will fill in their corresponding given weights, and under the arm co columns, we will input their distances from the datum. After we have completed that portion, we will calculate a moment for each item. Once that is complete, we will total our moments to arrive at a total moment, sum our weights to arrive at a total weight, divide our total moment by our total weight to get our center of gravity along the longitudinal axis in inches from datum. In this example, that works out to be 94.41 inches aft of the datum. We will conduct the lateral center of gravity check for this helicopter very much like we did the longitudinal center of gravity check. We will again start with an item, weight, arm, and moment chart. Under the items columns, we will fill in the aircraft, pilot, passenger, and fuel. The weights under the weight columns stay the same, but under the 
arm columns, we now in input distances left or right of the butt line. The aircraft arm is 0.2 inches right of the butt line, and it is a positive number. The pilot's position was 13.5 inches left of the butt line. Numbers left of the butt line, remember, are negative. The passenger's position was 13.5 inches right of the butt line, and the fuel position was 8.4 inches left of the butt line. Again, a negative number. For each item, we will calculate an individual moment. And remember, for the pilot and the fuel, which both had negative arms, we will end up with negative moments. Once we have completed all four moments, we will total them together to get a total moment of a negative 1,705.2 inch pounds. We will total our weights together, together to get a total weight of 2,203 pounds. The center of gravity range for most helicopters, like the center of gravity range for most airplanes, changes as the weight changes. Once we have determined the longitudinal center of gravity and total weight, we will consult the appropriate longitudinal center of gravity chart to ensure that we are operating in the approved longitudinal center gravity range. Along the bottom of this chart, we have the longitudinal center gravity in inches. Vertically along the left side of the chart is displayed the total aircraft weight in pounds. If we now take the longitudinal CG that we have found, 94.41 inches, and travel along the bottom of this chart until we get to 94.4 inches and then draw a line straight up from there to the top of the chart and then go to the left side of the chart vertically up until we arrive at what we found to be the total weight of our aircraft 2,203 pounds and draw a horizontal line straight across from there to the right side of our chart. Then if we will circle the spot where those two lines intersect and if they intersect within the shaded portion of this chart, then our center of gravity, our longitudinal center of gravity, falls within the approved CG range. Likewise, we will check the lateral center of gravity chart to ensure that we have remained within the approved lateral CG range. We will need the total moment we found in the lateral item weight arm moment chart as well as the total weight. We will travel along the bottom portion of the chart until we reach our total moment, a negative 1,705 inch pounds, and draw a line straight up from there to the top of the chart. Then we will travel along the left side of our chart until we reach our total weight. 2,203 pounds and draw a line straight across from there. We will mark the spot where those two lines intersect and the intersection of those two lines if it falls within the shaded portion of our chart we are again then within our lateral CG check range. A pilot can usually find a loading graph and center of gravity envelope chart in the pilot's operating handbook or the airplane flight manual to simplify and speed up pre-flight weight and balance calculations. Let's work through a sample problem now where we use a loading graph and a center of gravity envelope chart to help us determine whether the as-loaded center of gravity stays within the allowable center of gravity limits. In this example, we will use an aircraft with an empty weight of 1,864 pounds and an empty weight moment of 67,651.4 inch pounds. We have a pilot that weighs 120 pounds, a front seat passenger that weighs 180 pounds, a rear seat passenger that weighs 175 pounds, 88 gallons of fuel or 528 pounds, 100 pounds of baggage in baggage compartment A, 
and 50 pounds of baggage in baggage compartment B. You might have already noticed that none of these items in this chart so far contain arms or distances from the datum. We'll see why in just a moment. Now we will go to our loading graph to get the total load moment for our airplane. We will see on the left hand side of this graph the loaded weight in pounds starting at zero on the bottom on the left hand side and going up to 550 pounds and on the bottom across the bottom of the graph we'll see our load moment divided by a thousand in inch pounds going from zero to 35 across the bottom of the graph. Starting in the bottom left hand corner of our graph at the zero zero point, we'll see a series of diagonal lines moving up. The first one we come to we got is our pilot and front seat passenger line. The second one is our fuel line diagonal. Then we have our second row passenger or cargo diagonal, our baggage area A diagonal, and our baggage area B diagonal. Over here on the right side of this page, I've gone ahead and started for us an item weight moment divided by 1000 chart. Notice that again the arm column is missing because it's not needed for this calculation. I went ahead and inserted all the items we'll be using in this example under the items column. The aircraft, the pilot and front seat passenger, the second row passenger, fuel, the baggage in area A, and the baggage in area B, and their corresponding weights under the weight column. When I had all that entered, then I totaled the weight to get a total as loaded weight of 3,017 pounds. Under the moment divided by a thousand column, I started by listing the aircraft empty weight moment of 67.7 thousand inch pounds as was given to us on the previous slide. The rest of these moments I have to calculate using the graph here on the left. The first one I added the weight and the front seat passenger together to get a total combined weight of 300 pounds. Going up the left hand side of my chart to 300 and then straight across from there until I intersect the pilot and front seat passenger diagonal. Where I intersected at, I then move straight down to the bottom of the chart where I get a reading of 11,000 inch pounds. I record the 11 over here in this column and then I move on to my second row passenger. My second row passenger 175 pounds so again I go back over to my chart up to 175 the midway point between 150 and 200 go straight across till I intersect the second row passenger or cargo diagonal and then go straight down from there where I get a reading of 13 just over halfway between the 10 and the 15 and I record that over here in my chart. Next we go to the fuel 528 pounds of fuel. I go again to the left hand side of my chart up to 528 pounds just past the midway point between 500 and 550. Go straight across from there to intersect the fuel diagonal straight down to where I intersect the bottom line and there I get a reading of 24.5 which I record over here in my item weight moment chart. My next one is my baggage A which is 100 pounds. I then go again up the left hand side of this chart to 100 pounds draw a line straight across till I intersect the baggage area A diagonal and go straight down where I get a reading of 9.8 which I input over here in my item weight moment chart. My last one, my baggage area B, 50 pounds. I go up along the left hand side of this chart to 50 pounds straight across to where I intersect baggage area B diagonal straight down to the bottom of the chart where I get a reading of 6 for my load moment. I record that on a chart. Then I total all my individual moments to get a total moment of 132.
Once I have obtained my total loaded weight and my total, load of m total loaded moment, I can go to my center of gravity envelope chart. Here again you'll see on the left hand side, moving vertically from the bottom, I have my loaded airplane weight in pounds going from 1800 to 3150 pounds. And across the bottom of this chart I have my loaded airplane moment divided by a thousand inch pounds across the bottom of my chart. In the middle of this chart, I have a couple of lines in between which is my allowable center of gravity range for each weight. If my weight, my calculated total loaded weight and total loaded moment fall within this envelope, then I, my center of gravity is within the allowable limits for this flight. From the previous slide, we calculated our total aircraft weight to be has loaded 3,017 pounds. I'll go up to 3,017, just past the 3,000 pound mark here, and draw a horizontal line straight across the chart. Then I go down to the bottom of the chart, my loaded airplane moment line, my total air loaded airplane moment we determined previously was 132,000 inch pounds from 132 just between the 130 mark and 135 I'll draw a line going straight up vertically and where it intersects my total airplane weight line if it falls within this envelope and we see that it does then my loaded aircraft center gravity falls within the allowable limits and we're good to go